a toast to Rhoda Waswas. Otherwise, I know her as Ro. The you know her as the Blonde Bombshell. Uh, and I just started kind of like using social media as like a yellow pages to just start exploring. Like, what does Atlanta look like? What does Austin look like? And I would kind of dig through either explore feeds, hashtag searches, or pages, popular pages to see what was out there. And then did you hear the words, hey guys? <laughs> <laughs> I, def I definitely did. <laughs> Um, so I think I stumbled across your page probably in 2020, yeah. um, but I didn't pull the trigger just yet because the itch was there, but it was kind of like, there was still a lot of unknown. I hadn't even received the full offer yet. Uh, so I was waiting for a lot of things, like the ink to dry on a lot yeah. of things before I started diving into researching anything. We appreciate you for that <laughs> because yeah. a lot of times though, people, um, they put the cart before the horse yeah. as mm -hmm. the saying goes. And then so we do get you know customers that will call us and they just want to talk about what they're thinking about doing <laughs> as it pertains to a move to Atlanta. Or they have like two or three different cities they're considering and it's like, okay. But they've never been to- We're the not area. therapists here, here. We're just not trying to talk to you which way. It's right, like, and so it, it, it's very helpful from a broker perspective yeah. and the customer comes to the situation at least knowing kind of like the areas that they want to be in before they reach out for assistance because you know, try to explain to people that I, I don't know you, right? If, if you've just yeah. met me and you know, say, hey, I'm looking for a house and this is my pre-approval. Well, that's a guideline that I have to go off. Mm -hmm. But if I don't know you personally, I don't know, like, do you go out to eat every day? Do you want to be near the airport? Do you want this? Do you want that? And so a lot of times when customers call us, they put all of that responsibility onto the agent yeah. who doesn't know them and expect us to deliver what they want without knowing them. So I think that's always been interesting how people have that expectation and to start with. So, yeah. Mm. So you were, yeah. you were definitely, so you're scrolling through Instagram or. Yeah, so I could say from the end of 20, in the beginning of 2020, mm -hmm. and I'd already start, I, by that time I'd accepted the offer, started working remotely um, and worked remotely from Seattle with an Atlanta based salary because I decided on Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And that was namely because, I mean, one, Seattle is a very bellet and deficient place. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> so, <laughs> Atlanta was the complete opposite. So I thought, okay, I've done some hard time here. Let me sprinkle it up a little, put some razzle dazzle on, sprinkle it up, and get down to a place that I could feel at home, enjoy good food. Yeah. Seattle was not that great. And be close to family, just be in the same time zone yeah. was good enough for me. Um, so I did that. And then for, because of the fluid situation with COVID and the, so many unknowns about whether we're gonna go back to normal or, or whatever, um, relocation was on hold. So they were, they were also funding um, the relocation from Seattle to Atlanta. So I had an assigned person uh, or account manager who was gonna help me through that. And I said to them, I'm in a house, I want a house. Um, but they said, there's nothing we can do. What we don't even have trucks to move your, your furniture. I mean, you can, oh, wow. and even it, from the Seattle market, the, or the, the state of Seattle was on full lockdown. You can go outside your house. Wow. Whereas Atlanta was quite open. <laughs> so I'm like, well, yeah, I could just get on a plane. And go oh yeah. There. Just different. They just, <laughs> I don't think it was ever locked down. Was it? it was supposed to be. It was like the but there, April, I think it was. But there were people oh, clubbing. No, there were people clubbing people, during yeah. COVID. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was in the window like this. <laughs> I can't out. <laughs> um, so I, that, because of that, it ended up being, I think, from early 2020 until maybe the following January. Yeah. I have receipts. <laughs> uh oh. We're going to follow it up. I like that girl with receipts. So uh, I, I started following, like I hit the follow button in like January of 2021. Kind of so, you, so you started making the commitment early. You, know, you were just stalking. That's what Once you hit follow, it's official. It's a, right? it's a commitment. It's definitely official. And then um, in Jan yeah, January 24th, 2021, I reached out via DM because you know it goes down in the DMs. Yeah. And I said, hey, I'm planning to relocate to Atlanta from Seattle and interested in learning more about your purchasing process and building a home. And we're gonna guess who said- I can tell by the lengthy response, on the response that it was probably <laughs> Mark that responded. <laughs> the response was wonderful. I hope Mark. you find a lot of our content useful. We have done a ton of educational videos and checklists, which you can find on our profile along the top under highlights in our IGTV and on our feed. 
The biggest key will be to narrow down your location and pre-approvals to determine your budget. We can't wait to welcome you to the family and just let us know when you're ready. A little different than that was Seattle definitely State. Mark because my response would have been a lot more like, "Here's what, the form. To here's fill the out. form to fill out when you get pre-approved. Let me know." <laughs> right. So that was January. Yeah. Right after I sent that DM, I caught COVID. Mm. This is pre-vaccine. This is pre everything. Wow. So I got it Very. real bad. Uh, I ended up being hospitalized for three weeks. And back then, I was not a blonde bombshell. I was a long-haired, curly, wig-wearing brunette. Look, we got to find those or right. season those tests. <laughs> How did mine know that is the blonde bombshell? My profile. My Instagram profile. Is, oh, that was that's, from that's uh, back then? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. That, yeah, that was 2019. Um, so it was probably about this length okay. at the time. But I was only a dark-haired girl for a very long time. So uh, I, I survived that bout of COVID, thankfully. Uh, but it was scary. And as soon as I get out the hospital, the first two things I did, I get home, I shave my hair off. Wow. Don't ask why. So you have the moments, like he's <laughs> you, he's <laughs> <a> random <laughs> moment. <laughs> buzzed, buzzed my hair down, bleached it myself, not as good as my hairstylist out here. Um, and then I was like, look, I just started looking at my phone and going through like the Redfin reports that I would get sent to my phone, the Zilla red reports. Fin. And the good thing about Redfin is you can see kind of like what the comps are yeah. estimates, but they're not 100% accurate, not. Um, just so people know that. And I didn't know that for a long time. So I said, hmm, I bought this house in the fours, and I see houses like a block away from me being sold for six. Mm. So I was like, it's time to go. <laughs> Whether the relocation team was ready or not, I, I knew it was time to go because, I mean, we didn't see that type of, you know, volatility. Sure and appreciation in a very short period of time. Contrast to my mom, who's been in that house since 2006 or so. Mm. And I think her house just reached 600,000, uh -huh. but she bought it for like 100,000. Okay. Um, but you see how long That's, it took her to yeah, get but I don't, even, I don't even think that our, our families and our parents and that generation, I don't think that they really look or have ever looked at home ownership for what the appreciated value is. Mm -hmm. I think they yeah. bought homes to raise their family yeah. And, and settle. And settle. And, settle. and that was the American dream. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so even now when I talk to, you know, my mom about yes. like, you know, mom, since she bought your house, you now have this much equity. She's kinda like, What does that mean? What does that mean? Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. Like right. your mentality is not about making a profit. It's generational. So my mom's been in the same house for damn, you know, thirty years. But our generation, we get up and move Yeah. Like, Augusta I'm, went. I'm tired of living these walls. Top yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. very we're a very mobile uh generation. Mm -hmm. And it's not just domestic. I know people that get up and move oh, yeah. internationally yeah. at the drop of a dime. So uh it's, it's definitely a very, very different, it's a very stark contrast. We're I'm not attached to anything really. Mm -hmm. Not a desk, a chair, or anything like that. So even with the relocation from New York and Seattle, each move, I just donated or sold my stuff. I didn't keep any. Oh, well, interesting. It made it easier. It made it easier and cheaper to relocate. That probably explains all the fiancés, too. But that's, <laughs> that might be for another part of the conversation. She's just not attached. <laughs> <laughs> You've been warned. She said it all behind the front door. So she's just not attached. Um, I am attached. So, so yeah, but that. So... You follow us. You make the first commitment of like tuning into who we are and what we're about. I'm attached to you. Not now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so I, I remember when you sent us a DM. It was definitely Mark that responded. Yes. Um, because it was sugary sweet. It was yeah. sugary sweet. Um, and then eventually we ended up getting to a point where we had the consultation. Yes. And we had just started that program because for years. I was the person picking up the phone, hearing people's. I was really like a therapist because but you really the face. You were all over I was. I saw you. You know, we were great ones ATL, but Kurt was working a corporate job at the time. I was at a corporate America background, but I got laid off in 2014. Mm -hmm. So as we progress, and it's funny because when you say 2020, and you got COVID. That's when we officially launched Great Holds ATL as a brokerage. So you're actually mm -hmm. one of our very first as a brokerage because we started Great Hopes ATL back in like late 2014, like creating the name on Instagram, but we were with another brokerage firm. We were just real estate agents. Um, but then as we started finding success, we're like, you know what? Like a lot of people trying to tap into their entrepreneur spirit. 
the next step in real estate, if you want to take it there, is to get your broker's license. Mm -hmm. And Kurt said, you know, I'll do it if you do it. And that's kind of how Brigham's ATL kind of formed in 2020 during a pandemic, right? Opening up our own brokerage firm. So, you know, and that's kind of what I was doing. I was out there in the new home communities, filming and stuff like that. And that's what you kind of came across, I think. On yeah. Instagram. And even then, like, so 2021 is when I reached out, jumped yep. up and was ready to go. 2020, even 2019, I, it, it may not just been you alone, but I, I, I saw like a lot of stuff come through my feed when I was kind of stalking the Atlanta market. And I was remembering the price points and yes. I was like, oh, it's oh 100,000 for that, right. 200,000. I don't think I ever saw or ever saw anything above 200. So even when, like you said, you responded and said, there's tons of material or content to help, you know, get you prepared. So I'm digging through videos and clicking on links and watching your Hey Guys tours to <laughs> all the houses that were empty and just like, and, and to your credit, like I could sit and, I used to watch Golden Girls 24 hours a day. Don't judge. I flash out But I would pause and I would just sit and watch you to just take an empty space. Sometimes there was no drywall, there was no flooring. And I could see it like this, a stage set up. describing it. Yeah. yeah. And like, I thought, I that's like a unique that. talent. Because I've seen people describe moms in the past, and I'm just like, yeah, whatever. I don't Why are you bothering? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so I was already visualizing, even like starting to visualize the design concept mm. of what my now home is. And a lot of that stuff started years ago. Like, I just kind of kept it parked because I said, even with the Seattle home being my starter home, it wasn't the right space to do some of that. Right. Or I didn't have the contractors or the type of yeah. people that could help make that vision come to life. So I said, don't worry, we'll do it eventually. Manifest. 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 That's that word again. Yep. So now we get to, I want to say April. Is when I, I, remember I think, being, yeah, it was around that springtime. It was early about. spring. I pinged my boss and I said, I got to go. I got to go to Atlanta for a week and look for a house. Now, in my head, house shopping was like shoe shopping. You just drop <laughs> your luggage in the hotel and just go pick out houses. And I was terribly wrong. And terribly. were the only ones that you followed? Or like, how, like what no. was that process about? Like, so, yeah, tell, tell people out there, you know, because we're in a social media environment. It's mm. even like tenfold now than it was even back in 2019, 20, right? So, what what initially drew you to us and did you like reach out to other agents did you have like an interview process and then we could jump into yeah, like what was your what was your, what was your was. what was your search process as yeah. far as like finding the agent that you wanted to work with mm -hmm. and then from there because it's absolutely different from what the seattle experience was it was like yeah. looking at houses clicking a button boom talking to an agent but this one was a little different just what four or five years later you know yeah, yeah. It, it's very different um and I, I had to pick off a lot of what I experienced in Seattle oh, yeah. to my fault. <laughs> it, it was very, very humbling. Yeah. I'll say that. Um, so I think most of the other agents that I might have found, I was just look. all I was seeing was homes feeding. Now that I've started the search, like feeds, mm -hmm. the algorithm was starting to feed to me all of these homes in different parts of the Atlanta area. And then I would just go look to see whose page it was. And it was it was all over the place. It was yours. It was a couple of other um, agents, most of them predominantly black. Um, and then I thought, okay, well, I wanna support black businesses. So of course I'd reach out to them first, no shade. But as I would try to formalize introductions, even before I stepped foot in Atlanta in April, mm. it was very like curt and very dismissive. It's very much like me. <laughs> <laughs> Four just choice of words. Short, <laughs> just, I don't have time for you. And it, when I would go back to kind of assess their profiles on Instagram, it, it, it was very luxurious and high end. And I thought that was speaking to me at first, but the personality wasn't. Okay. So they'd be like, I don't have time for this. Like, you have to sign with me now. And I, if you don't, I'm not showing you anything. And I thought, oh, that's rude. Mm. Like, my name's Ro. Could we start yeah. with the pleasantries right. and kind of work our way uh, up from there? And I think one. I don't think I did any cons. I don't think I ever got to the point of consults before I left okay. um, Seattle. I right. came, I scheduled it with a few. Right. And so I think one was in person, the rest were all um, virtual. Virtual. Mm -hmm. And they were just disasters. So I had a scheduled Zoom call with both of you. Well, I thought it was just Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Most people think that's what they're signing up for. So I was at my hotel still. 
And then I had a couple of other tours scheduled that afternoon. And I remember I had my little notebook and pad and pen. And I was like, okay, I came prepared. But even before that, I think by that point, I'd sent an email that had the pre-approval letter. Yeah. I did have it in You, did have you it. definitely did. Yeah. You definitely did. You already went to the consultation. I had So that definitely happened. But do you want to talk, so this is behind the front door, talk a little bit about your little research that you did. So, you know, it's real. Fun, fun fact. <laughs> fun fact. I look up people who I'm going to speak to before I speak to them. It could be wrong. It could be not. I do it just so that I get some sort of a sense, not accurate in your case for sure, but so that I get a sense of who is going to be on the other side of um, the introduction. And so I remember going to your Instagram uh, page and I was like, this girl's not buying a house. <laughs> like, it was. I remember. I remember. We did your consultation on a Sunday. Yeah. Yes. Which we never. We did. never do consultations on a Sunday. And Mark was like, "No, but she's relocating. She's this. <laughs> she did send over. And she did send over the pre-approval. So just do it with me." And I was like, "I don't work on Sunday, so you could have at it, right? You could have at it. <laughs> she's not buying the house. You're going to waste your time on a Sunday." And then you're going to come and tell me after the fact how much you just wasted your time. And I'll be there to hear it. And so we ended up getting into a full-blown argument. Yeah. Like, oh, over you. Yeah. Over the bomb. He's like, he really did not want to. Because I was like, like so look, him. I take it. Look, look at the receipt. Look at her Instagram. Show me. Do you think she's buying a house? Do you? Yes. <laughs> he thought so. <laughs> so I said, look, I'll do this. I'll do this. But understand, if this is a waste of my time, like, I'm going to be on for the rest of the day. Because we had experience. We, we, we experience it all the time. What, what the public doesn't understand is that, you know, as a customer, you might have your stuff together, right? And you come and you have it. But when you have sort of an organic reach like we have, where it's not just local to the Atlanta market, but like we have well over 100,000 followers across platform. And so what people don't really understand is the volume of inquiries that come to us. And so it comes off as I'm very cold. I'm very like, but if you think about it, if I've already encountered 200 people on any given day, that are asking me how much is the price of this house? What credit score? What credit need? score do I need? Yeah. It's like, by the time I get to you, I probably just had it. Right. And so we get to this full ball argument. It's a Sunday. He wants me to do the console. Reluctantly, I do it. He's like, and I'm hey, like, let's get going. And I do it, and we get on, and the screen comes up, and I, I think I still remember. I think you had, um, you had your employer's T-shirt on. Yeah. Um, yeah. You had your employer's T-shirt on. We won't say where that was. <laughs> and, um, and I remember being like, but you had, you had like your note. Like I could tell you had like, you I'm came cool for either. <laughs> you had a bind. So now I'm stuck because now I'm like, oh, oh. like. She's smart. Yeah. Like, like, and then, we, <laughs> but then we started talking. I don't know if you remember, we started talking and then you mentioned or you referenced being in tech and prior that to Italian, yeah. prior yeah. to me doing great homes, ATL real estate full time. Yeah. That's my background. So I was like tech, Psh, she don't look like she's in tech. Then. Like I'm still in my bag of everything you're not supposed to do as a real estate agent. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I saw the Instagram. There's no tech, whatever. And so, but we ended up having a conversation, a good conversation. Yeah. And the one thing I remember is that I remember like, I think you were approaching a search based on the builder initially. No. And, but your locations were so like all over, all the, over the place. I do remember that. I was like, she said like Carol, it was like Carrollton. And then there was, was like this. The was like, years, five years. Yeah. But they were like anybody out there that, those Georgia, those are not even. those are not close. And so, but the conversation was good, and I could tell by the way you could carry on the conversation. Okay, so she's smart. Yeah. So, so we ended the, when we ended your consultation. Uh, you closed it. I remember you closing it. You're saying I closed. No, I, I like. Her. I closed it, and I looked there, and I was like, "Shut up!" And I like her. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was like right. so, and then you know, Mark is the just the nice guy. He's like. See, honey, you don't give people more of a chance. You got people, and I was like, "You, you got me on this." But you one. still got her. You like, you're handling it. All. But I was like, "But you, uh, she won't be a handful." But you still got her. Let but me I didn't ask her. you a question then. So, like you said, the volume and intake, and now my tech hats. Yeah. How do you filter through 
that so that you get to really the folks that are qualified, that are ready. Years that, of experience. Years of experience, experience and just putting forward calls in place. So right now, um, and we hadn't done this for a while, we actually have uh, an assistant that answers all the phones. You know, all the offices that you called before used to be you call and one of us is going to pick up the phone and we would just be stuck with whatever was on the other end. Yeah. And now it's like, no, we actually have an office manager that handles the calls. Um, we have built out an amazing CRM product. And so now there's so many filters and layers before you actually get to, Mark. not just Mark and I, but any of our agents. Uh, uh, but I DM'd you, I didn't call anybody. Right. So. See, at that time in 2021, was it? Um, yeah, we had gone from this stage of just this, you know, just creating our own company. So. You, you know, we'll get into your company as well. You learn things along the way and you learn by just... I just thought of something I got to teach y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but like Kurt said, like we would pick up the phone and like I would have hear everybody's story. So yeah, Kurt is very process oriented and he actually, when did you get laid off? In 20, just before it wrote, I think it's 2021. It was like March, March of 2021. 2021. Yeah. So he came from this project management background. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm that guy that likes to get out there. You're seeing my videos. I like to... I'm very personable. I like to, you know, interact with people. He's much more reserved, more like project manager based process. No, we got to, you know, get this under control um, because it was a flood of calls and stuff like that. So yeah. when we were, when we got off of that Zoom, he, he it was funny because he did say, uh, I remember, I like her. Because I don't so, ever have to tell Marquis, right? I know he, I know that he loves those moments. And so before he knew, he knows when it's survived for me and when it's not, right? And so he was quiet. So I just put the laptop down and I was literally like, shut up. I like her. And so, he, and it really was that. I don't know what it was. I think it was me doing my homework, but everything that I had researched was wrong. It was like everything that you put out there or that, that I saw was like, didn't match up to somebody saying that, oh, I'm... I work here. I have this. I'm pre proof of this. I, I was like, okay. That's intentional. I need to confuse my enemy. Well, I'm not the <laughs> enemy now, but success is all success. But, but I mean, on the flip side of that, I thought it was a great conversation. Oh, wait, and right. I, it was. It was and great. I, I, did, I do like did not just your industry, but even like hairstylists, uh, nail techs that I, I go to out here as well complain about this a lot is that people forget the human at own. Yes, that's what we You're want human. to get to. You like yeah. to sleep. You like to have a day off. I remember, well, we'll get into the other day. I've disturbed you on a Sunday. <laughs> uh, Sunday's our day now. Um, but I always like to just follow the process. If you have a set of instructions like do this, do this, do this, I'm going to follow that yeah. first. So I was very surprised even in that DM that you even responded because like for me with my brand, I have prompts everywhere. Like I want to automate and refine down to just funneling everything through a single intake so that I don't become overwhelmed. Um, but, you know, just having that conversation and then having my little binder and I was like, well, cut this person, that person, that person. The agent search was done yeah. that, after that conversation. But I think, like you said, I, I didn't, I, I had something to work with, but it was sporadic. It was all over the place. And it was a lot of it was based off of feedback that I was getting from, you know, just Google searches or from friends I knew would move uh, to this yeah. area and they preferred everything north. And I yeah. said, it does. north, south, north, south. Like there's no in between. And I was trying to figure out what this perimeter thing yeah. was. Yeah. And I said, I don't need this, but it's in the middle of everything I and need. And it's a conversation because people will say, do you live inside of Fruger or outside of Fruger? So yeah. as somebody that's not from the Atlanta area, outside the Fruger is anything around the 285 mm -hmm. uh, corridor. So. People do get hung up on that, and and I want to ask them because I'm jumping ahead a little bit. Hmm. So when you finally arrive in Atlanta, you end up you know renting where everybody that comes to Atlanta is told to go, which is where. Well, not just that. I I remember I was coming for my holiday readiness drills every year with my like two jobs before that. So mm -hmm. we would end up in this area. We would end up in Butler. We can stock area. I guess I had a Buckhead. I guess they Buckhead, yeah. <laughs> we ended Everybody up. knows. Everybody knows Buckhead. But Buckhead was different mm -hmm. in 2014. Yeah. Buckhead was different. Yeah, from 15, 2016. Yeah. So I, I'm i going off of memory and mm -hmm. thinking, I'll just plug and play in this area. Right. That's where I was always at. This is a place that we always went to or gravitated to whenever I would come to visit. Right. So it was a no brain. Yeah. Um, and then I get to Buckhead in 2021, <laughs> in July. 
July was when I, I, I pulled the trigger and, you know, packed up all my stuff. That was on a trailer for like a month. Um, so I packed the necessities with me in a suitcase. I didn't really buy anything. I was eating off of like paper plates for a while. I, I was thugging it out for a while. <laughs> um, but I found a decent apartment um, somewhere within the heart of Buckhead. And I just worked. I, I didn't really have an excuse to do anything else. I knew I knew tons of people. This is the sixth borough, I say. Usually they say it's yeah. Miami. Yeah. I think Atlanta's yeah, taking that spot. There were some people from elementary, people from high school, people from college. Yeah. I knew they were here, but I didn't want to say it. Yeah. I, didn't, I wanted to take that time. I didn't want to be as rude as I was going to Seattle. A lot of people cut me off because I didn't say anything. Yeah. And I stood my ground and I was like, it's not up to you. I wasn't asking you to leave. I left. This time I said, okay, I'll get people involved or at least a few. Aware. And yeah. provide awareness just so it doesn't come off like I'm just this mean person, mm -hmm. but... I didn't want to go out and blow a horn and, or a megaphone and start announcing like, here, here I'm here in, in, in Atlanta because I knew the floodgates would open yeah. and I wouldn't have the space to just take my time. People are in your ear. We hear that all the time. You know, everybody's got a friend or a cousin or somebody related to them in Atlanta. And they're all like, oh, you should live in this area. Oh, yeah. You should do this. And I know from and one of our- this came from. Yeah, from one of our conversation, you know, with your little binder and everything like that, mm -hmm. you had probably even highlighted certain, you know, where was this when you did this video and stuff like that? And so we looked everywhere, I think, from Douglasville, South Fulton, mm -hmm. um, maybe even parts of Cobb initially sending you, and then you threw out, you know, ones that didn't even make, make sense. sense, like the Conyers or Carrollton. But yeah. you, when on, I remember in our conversations, you were like, I do travel a lot. Mm -hmm. I would like to be close to the city, but I don't necessarily need to be in the city because there was a lot of stuff going on in Bucket. Yeah. As many people know, because, you know, it is glitz and glamour for the South. They used to call it the Beverly, used to call it the Beverly Hills of the South. Mm -hmm. has not turned out to be that anymore. But well, there's still high yeah, there's shopping. Still high shopping like but but yeah. also it's like, you know, I can, I, I don't spend much time out in California, but I've been out there a little bit. It's like the person that wants to stay, you know, buy a house in Beverly Hills, and then outside, you know, of yeah. the city as well. And so you would never, you never came off as like, oh, this area is too good for me or not too good for me. You kind of really took our advice every step away. Yeah. yeah. I think you gave me the element of compromise. Like I, I needed someone yeah. to talk some sense some and be sense. realistic. Uh, where a lot of people have these check boxes. Like I can't move here. I can't yes. have this. And these are non-starters. And for me, I knew that I'm a remote worker and was going to remain one. I still am to this day. So I was flexible. I could okay. do my job yeah. on some yeah. Um, The travel was yeah. once we would open things back up, mm -hmm. even though Atlanta was never closed, I knew that there was going to be a demand for me um, professionally to be on plays, to go see my teams and connect and network. Um, and then professionally, I like to get out too. Yeah. So I used to travel once a month yeah. for vacation. Uh, and vacation is like min maximum four oh. days. That's enough for me to get in and out. And plus, I'm on the East Coast again. You have plenty of assets yeah, yeah. to dip out. So I knew that right. that was going to be a high possibility. So airport, you know, uh, being remote worker. Um, also, I really wasn't stuck on like the the Beverly Hills right, thing. Right. Like, I think I would text y'all and be like, get me out. Yes. Well, yeah. I looked daily. It was almost like a daily recurrence. Yeah. Like we were getting close throughout the deal. And I just remember like your deal, I got delayed once or twice. And I remember you being like, I have to stay here again, like longer. <laughs> and then like something happened in the apartment that you were staying in, either got flooded or something, but they had to move you. The name is move you to a different apartment. I had apartment. a leak in the apartment. Yeah. And you were just like, I just want to be out of bucket. I don't even want to be on another floor. I just want to be. And it was crazy because we get so many people that they start the conversation with, they want to be in Buckhead, Roswell, Sandy Springs, Midtown. Mm. And it's and it's usually the relocation buyers because they don't have any other awareness around what else the Atlanta area has to offer until they start watching my videos. Until they start watching your video, <laughs> shameless plug. But I think about you and other people because we yes. had other clients that were renting a Buckhead as well and were like, no. I want to be as far away from here as I possibly can. Yeah. yeah. And it's good, I think, having this conversation now for people that are going to watch yeah. and listen to this because Atlanta is more than just Buckhead, Midtown, Sandy Springs. Yeah. It's like there are so many cool places to be where yeah. you can get an amazing opportunity. I don't know how affordable things are <laughs> anymore, but yeah. um, what was what, what would you say 
was your biggest disappointment while you were living in Buckhead? We have a, we have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm asking because, like, again, it's it's real perspective. But I think that if more people hear the real perspective and not from the agents just right. trying to sell them something, it's more so like, just what was your what was your honest like what was Experience. what was just disappointing about Buckhead versus like when you went there, it was like you said centralized it's what you're familiar with it's going to give you access to what you need and then you get there and you're like i don't even want the access get me out yeah i mean coming from new york and i was very new york was a very noisy place mm -hmm. um and when i used to live there and go to places that were rural i would usually sleep with the radio on i needed noise mm, yeah then i made the transition to seattle moved in the woods oh, my noise was like frogs <laughs> or you know deer right. or things like that so then I started to adjust to be able to just get used to just quiet. Mm. And then I get to fuck him. And it made New York look timid or tame. I thought this was noisier than New York. And it was just unnecessarily loud. It didn't feel safe. It wasn't safe where I was particularly. And it used to be the point where I didn't really watch the news. I didn't have cable. I didn't have a TV. It was still sitting in a box behind me. And I used to like go on these blogs that would just perpetuate just constant crime and street racing noise and gunshots fireworks you name it like i would hear stuff go on this page we were on the front page of that blog within minutes and i'm like oh that's what that is but i had to remember that's not georgia georgia is a state yes, yes. and i thought if i just took what i'm looking at from this micro lens i would leave the whole state mm -hmm. you know so i kind of had to you know kind of put that into perspective and i thought Okay, I don't remember exactly when we went into contract. It would have been. I think it was August. Yeah, I think it was maybe July. It had to be before. July. I think it was before August because the close date originally was supposed to be August. Right. For the first. Right. For the first. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we'll get into. So let's get into that too. So, the house that you ended up with, and our audience will see. So we'll get into some of the things that you've done to it. But what did Ro need, or why? Why did she want? This three car garage, five bedroom, brand new house. Like, what was your perspective just because you could financially? Or, like, what was your purpose? Was it there was family or friends involved in your thinking? So, what was that thought process? Before you answer, though, because I want to just give a little backstory, a little context. So, the house that you ended up with was not the house that you started. It was not. It wasn't even my first. What is, I'm scared to ask this, but what is one question that you want to ask Mark and Kurt that the public would not know? How do you make sure to protect your relationship, your partnership? Because if you have a disagreement in business, yeah. you go to bed and... It's feels over. It's feels over. <laughs> <laughs>